Hi there, my name's Karen and I'm an abstract artist living in Shell Harbour, Australia. As part of Shell Harbour City Council's Positivity Project, I'll be teaching you how to transform your existing furniture using fluid art techniques. As part of this video series, I've included a list of supplies you can download. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you. Here are a few examples of my paintings using fluid art techniques. In this video series, you'll learn how to paint pour and also resin. They're two forms of fluid art. Fluid art is where we have acrylic paints and we add a medium to them. In this case, I use Floetrol and it creates a runny consistency. It lets it flow across the canvas. Here's a couple of examples of recent tables I've completed. They were paint poured on first and then resined. Most important is to prep your furniture. Here I'm going to spray this can two times ultra cover gloss white over the top of the glass. Luckily with the pieces of furniture I've chosen to use in this video series, I don't have to do much to the actual legs or any other part of the furniture. If you do need to repaint them, the same brand of uh, spray paint you can totally use. Choose whichever colour you like. It's always good to put a primer on first and the same Rust-Oleum brand as well. It's really good. Ensure that you've got complete coverage right across your surface. And you will leave it to dry. So first up, we'll need Floetrol. Floetrol is our pouring medium. And we'll need acrylic paints. These are Eraldo brand. I do sell these through my art store. I also use these Deco Art Extreme Sheens. These colors, extreme sheen metallic paints, so I like those effects on the edges of my paintings. That's a deep sea colour, Eraldo. Lay is the bottom, very, very light turquoise. There's metallic gold there in the extreme sheen. Raspberry in that large tub there, same brand, Eraldo. Small raspberry colour, or berry I believe it is. Put my gloves on with paint pouring or any type of fluid art it can get quite messy but particularly with paint pouring the white paint i use is actually a house paint it's so much more economical to use and you'll go through so much white paint the brand is on the supplies list i've provided so you don't actually use too much paint that's the amount. Now these brands of paint, I know the thickness very well. All different brands have different thicknesses of paints. But generally as a ratio, I like to say one part paint, two parts Floetrol. And depending on the thickness of each brands of paint, you adjust accordingly. So you may go one part paint, three parts Floetrol or four parts Floetrol. Depending on the technique, depending on the surface you're using, and depending on the brand of paint you're using. So before you do this on your furniture, have a few goes on normal canvases, small canvases or tiles, just to get your ratio of paint to pouring medium correct first. These are just standard size cups. Now always your darker colours are always heavier, so you probably put a smidgen less of those in than you would normal co oh, other colours. 
Now, as I said, these extreme sheen paints I only use a little bit of, so I've got shot cups for those. See how much flow trial I'm adding. It's probably at least three times or four times the amount of paint. And it's always best to have more paint than you need than too little. Obviously you want the whole paint to cover the canvas or in this in this circumstance cover the actual tabletop. But you can always use that paint that you don't use here in another project. Now when you're mixing or when you're stirring, you want to scrape the side, scrape the stick and scrape the bottom. It has to be 100% mixed or you end up with lumps in your paint or it cracks as it's drying. When mixing the larger cups, you may get a cramp after a while. Just have a break for a few seconds and go again. But you have to ensure that the mixture is 100% mixed. Scrape the sides, scrape the stick and scrape the bottom and keep mixing and stirring. As they say, the consistency you're looking for is melted ice cream or warm honey. It needs to flow off the stick with ease. This brand of house paint is a lot thinner than the actual artist brand acrylics, so it's equal ratio always. One part paint, one part Floetron. But you stir this up as just as much as the others. Scraping the sides, scraping the bottom and scraping the stick. Other really nice extreme sheens. Now you get your trusty hair dryer. As you can see, mine's had a few goes at it. Paint everywhere over. It's not going to win any beauty awards, but it certainly does the trick. Now I want to pour my paint. It's I guess this technique is sort of a version of a Dutch pour, although I do not puddle pour. I put paint over the canvas next to each other as opposed to on top of each other. This is my version of it.
So I just used up the colours. I don't have to use all of the colours. And the extreme sheens are put on the edges. You don't want to put too little paint and you don't want to put too much on there. Now here's another view. Might be easier to see how much paint I put on the surface. Once you've got all your paint, you're ready to go and use the hairdryer. Make sure you have it on the highest setting. You don't want it on low because that won't push the paint around enough. And it's up to you how you push that paint around. The more you do use the hairdryer on it, the more muddy the colours will come. So try not to use the hairdryer too much, basically. If you overdo it, the colours will start muddying. Now the cells that will start appearing, or those little circles, there'll be a video coming up soon where it's a close-up and you'll see. They'll start popping. The torch, and you want to pop the air bubbles. If you don't pop the air bubbles, they can dry as little tiny bumps across your painting and most of the time when those air bubbles pop they turn into more cells and cells are the effects that everyone loves on my paintings I do love a little bit of cells so I don't want them to overtake the whole painting or the composition all those circles they come in all different shapes and sizes they're cells and as you can see in the close-up, the Extreme Sheen Gold Metallic Ruby, they're shining through just in little parts. And there's Metallic Aqua, Aquary Turquoise it is, just on the edges. And here's another view. All that paint coming off the side. Now, once that paint that does come off the side, once that dries, you can use that, they're called paint skins, and you can use them to create your own jewellery. That's another thing to YouTube, but they look pretty cool, pretty cool effects. So you'd want to leave it there for a little while to dry. These normally take about two to three, maybe four days, depending on your, the weather where you're at, to dry. You wouldn't want to resin them for another week or two though. Just to ensure that all the layers of that paint are completely dry.